is the Lord and he reigns on high. He is the Lord. He's spoken to the darkness, created the light. He is the Lord. Who is like unto him, never ending in days. He is the Lord. And he comes in power when we call on his name. Show your power, O oh Lord, our God. So show your power, O oh Lord, our God. So show your power, O oh Lord, our God, our God. Gospel, Lord, is the hope for our nation. You are the Lord. It's the power of God for our salvation. You are the Lord. We ask not for riches, but we look to the cross. You are the Lord. And for our inheritance, give us the lost. just celebrated Pentecost Sunday on the weekend and uh, we've been talking about that leading up to the Pentecost uh, sharing the scriptures together and so we're going to just continue uh, talking about the power of the Holy Spirit 
I'm so glad everyone could uh, join us tonight. And as I send a message on Facebook, if you have a prayer request during our evening, just uh, post it on, on there. You don't have to use uh, full names or anything. And we'd be glad to pray for those needs later on this evening. Well, I'd like to say hi, too. <laughs> and uh, God bless you. And thank you for joining us for this uh, prayer and share. And, Come closer. Uh, and uh, God is so good to us. His mercy is, is new and fresh every day. And uh, I know I need the power of God to flow through me. And, and uh, so that, you know, God can, can show forth his glory and his might, his power, and uh, reveal so, some of the things that are happening in our, in, and at times, he can even pray through us. Yes. So uh, we look yes. forward to uh, the word of God today, and I just want to pray. Uh, thank you, Father, for this night, yes. for this prayer and share night. Yes. Oh, Lord, we thank you for your yes. presence. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. Yes. And, Lord, when there are so many that are... Uh, well, they're feeling the effects of shutdown. There are some that are feeling the effects of a sickness or even a disease that they're going through. Mm -hmm. Father, I thank you for your power. And I ask that you would reveal your power to them in Jesus' name. And you would send them believing ones. Uh, Lord, those that know of your power that will break the power of the enemy. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. So help us in our study tonight. Thank you, Jesus. That you'll uh, help us that as we, as we uh, chat about your word and as we talk about it and explain it, I recognize I don't know everything, but you do. Yes. You are yes. our teacher, so Thank teach you. us. In Jesus' name, amen. So I'm just going to read from Acts 2, just the um, where we kind of left off uh, last week. And um, this is after the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, just as the Father promised, and Peter is preaching. So we're going to look at Acts 2, just starting at verse 38. So Peter replied to each of them, because the... Those that heard their different languages being spoken said, you know, what are we supposed to do with this? What should we do? So Peter said, each of you must turn from your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins. And then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is to you and to your children and even to the Gentiles, all who have been called by the Lord our God. Then Peter continued preaching for a long time, strongly urging all his listeners, save yourselves from this generation that has gone astray. Mm, could be praying that prayer today. Yeah, you're right. Mm. And those who believed what Peter said were baptized and added to the church, about 3,000 in all. They joined with the other believers and devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, sharing in the Lord's Supper and in prayer. A deep sense of awe came over them all, and the apostles performed many miracles signs and wonders and all the believers met together constantly and shared everything they had they sold their possessions shared the proceeds with those in need they worshiped together at the temple each day met in homes for the lord's supper shared their meals with great joy and generosity all the while praising god and enjoying the goodwill of all the people and each day the lord added to their group those who were being saved I think we should talk about this scripture a little bit more. There are some things in here that I think are worth discussing. Praise God. There's always some thing, good things in the word of God. Peter, in verse 38, he says, Repent. My uh, translation, I'm using the, that amplified Bible, you know, mm -hmm. because it's louder. It's louder. <laughs> <laughs> Repent. Change your views. Change your views and purposes to accept the will of God in your inner selves instead of rejecting it. 
Wow. I, I think that's, uh, that's something worth noting because we all have our news and views. And we've even in this, this day and age, we all have our news mm -hmm. and we all have mm -hmm. our views. Mm -hmm. And quite honestly, we really do need to have the Holy Spirit's help. We can sort out that which is lies and that which is truth. But this is a lot deeper than just the news and the views. Mm -hmm. This is something that um, can change a person in their inner self. Mm -hmm. He uses that term, inner self, instead of rejecting it. And then... I also want us to note some of the things that that the disciples did. Mm -hmm. Wow, you want to? Yes, mm -hmm. read that, dear. A deep sense of awe came over them all, and the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. Now they had done that before. Yes. When they walked with Jesus. Yeah. Because he sent them out two by two yeah. to lay hands on the sick. And cast out demons. They they had a bit of a problem with casting out the devil at one time. Yeah. But he sent them out to do that. And so here, after the Holy Spirit came upon them, they performed many miraculous signs and wonders. And then it changed their be the behavior of the believers. Well, and that's what I wanted to point out is, mm -hmm. you know, um, I grew up in Pentecostal circles, and so did you. And um, we saw a lot of God do a lot of things in our lives. And uh, to be honest with you, it was all good. Now, we didn't have people swinging from chandeliers. We didn't have those, but we certainly, uh, well, you talk about holy rollers. I saw a few rollers. And we had joy. We did have joy. Unspeakable. You know, it was better, <laughs> I would say, it's better felt than felt. But, you know, it's not just about... The Holy Spirit, he baptizes, he fills us uh, to overflowing. And, uh, I mean, what is supposed to happen when you have him who is divine enter us, these, these uh, creatures that he created? Um, undoubtedly, they're, they're, they may do strange things, but you know what I, what I see in this? I see that the Holy Spirit led his people people to do what Jesus did it says in Acts 10 that Jesus was anointed with the Holy Spirit and he went about doing good yes he healed the sick and, and, and even raised the dead and, and, cast, and out cast out devils he did those kinds of things and Jesus said the same authority same power that he had he was investing in, in these believers and that they would know the difference, and one of those things would be um, would be the being filled with the Holy Spirit. John baptized with water, you know. And John actually talked about this, but there's going to be somebody come after me who is going to uh, who is going to uh, 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 also baptize you. John baptized you with water, but there's one coming after you that's going to be that's going to baptize you in the Holy Spirit. So, um, you know, it, it's not just about being baptized. It's about the work of God in our hearts and lives to do good works, to do the things that Jesus would do. Yes. You know, they fed the, the hungry. They looked after the, the poor, you know, the widows, the orphans. They did some of that. They, they showed forth good works. And you say, well, I don't necessarily have to speak in tongues to do that, do I? Well, well, no, but what is interesting is Jesus said that when they received power, that they, it would allow them to be witnesses. So mm -hmm. it's not just sharing, it's just not doing uh, good works, you know. It's just not about speaking in tongues, but it's a combination of the work of the Spirit in our lives. And what happens is when the Spirit works in our lives, we overflow. <laughs> You can't help yourself. Yeah. Can't help yourself to help people. You yeah. see, and and <laughs> that's that's kind of uh, the kind of thing that I see happening. Um, it changed their attitude towards one another. Yes, and it how they did. One another. Yes, it did. There was it no racism. Habits. They got to meet together every day at the temple. Yep. 
we're hope, still hoping for once a week. <laughs> <laughs> but they were, they were, the, they, they acted and did as the church was supposed to. Mm-hmm. Jesus said he would build his church. And we often wonder how we're, how, how that happens. But when we see what happened here, the Holy Spirit outpouring to the point where, how many did you say come, come to faith then? Uh, there was 3,000 in all. What in the world would we do with 3,000 people <laughs> all in one place? Woodstock's uh, got, what, 500 and, well, 5, 50, about, about 5,500 uh, folks or so. Mm-hmm. And uh, what would we do? <laughs> you, you know, um, they didn't have a plan in place. They didn't have any systems in place. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. They, they really didn't have, uh, you know, altar workers or anything like that. Mm-hmm. They, they come in this thing green. Mm-hmm. And all they had was the Holy Spirit to lead them, guide them. Mm-hmm. Somehow, these Spirit-filled believers, somehow, they were able to do these works. They weren't able to do them on their own. Mm-hmm. Paul the Apostle says, I can't do a thing on my own, but I can do all things through Christ that strengthens Jesus me. said, I can't do anything without the Father. No. He was the same. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't do anything, but I see my Father doing it. Yep. Or I hear my father saying it. Yeah. So and he, he obviously took time to listen. Yes. To the father. And, and I, 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 talk about that I, I, I wonder how in the world does that take place? Mm-hmm. Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. And at one point he said, you know, I got sheep that are not of, these, of this fold yet. But they, they listen to me. I found a really interesting portion of scripture in Romans chapter 5, and there's just a little nugget in here that I want us to see, but in order to get to that nugget, I want to read, I want to read the, the context. We'll start with verse 1, chapter 5. Therefore, that's Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore, now, there's some stuff that goes on before it, and you can read that part on your own because those are all important words. Since we are justified, we're acquitted, we're declared right. <laughs> righteous and given right standing with God. Being great in God. Wow. Through faith, mm-hmm. let us grasp the fact that we have the peace of reconciliation to hold and to enjoy peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One. Mm -hmm. And you know, we're not going to experience the wonderful works of God without being justified, you see, without being acquitted and declared righteous. Mm -hmm. Without, I think that's an important word, right standing. Right, because you can't come to the Father. That's right. Except through Christ. Except through Christ. Through him, also, we have our access, our entrance, our introduction by faith into this grace, which is the state of God's favor, in which we firmly and safely stand. We're not in one minute and out the mm-hmm. next. Mine says joyfully. Oh, you've got to rejoice. Yeah. Yep. And let us rejoice and exult in our hope of experiencing and enjoying, what does it say? The glory of God. What is that? Ooh. His presence? That's his presence. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's, oh, my. Ooh. Moreover, let us be full of joy, not in the sweet by and by. I'm looking forward to heaven. Yes, I am. But we can have joy now. Let us exalt and triumph in our troubles. Mm. Hmm. Mine says rejoice when you run into problems and trials. <laughs> Rejoice when you run into COVID. <laughs> oh, let us be full of joy. Let us exult and triumph in our troubles and rejoice in our sufferings. Now, some of us think we're suffering now because we're locked down. Well, joy will come in the morning. We haven't seen it. No, we haven't. Knowing that the pressure and affliction and hardship will produce patience and unserving endurance. So, you know, these disciples were with Jesus. They saw their master killed. They saw him raised from the dead. They experienced 
the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And they were about to go into some persecution later on in, in uh, Acts. But they, in the hardship, they didn't ask to be released out of the hardship. They asked for patience and unserv unserving endurance and boldness. And endurance, the fortitude develops maturity of character that is approved faith and tried integrity. And the character of this sort produces the habit of joyful and confident hope of eternal salvation. Confident expectation. Glory to God. Such hope never disappoints or deludes or shames us. For God, listen to this now, here's the important part. For God's love has been poured into our hearts through whom? The Holy Spirit. Yes, who has been given to us. <laughs> you know, folks, we were never intended. God never intended for us to take this journey by ourselves. Oh, no. He did never. Did he intend for us to take this journey alone? Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And then he tells his disciples later, he said, I'm going away. What? You said you weren't leaving. Well, if I don't leave the, 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 the comforter, the guy that's just like me, he, he won't be able to invest in you. Yep. Can I put it like yeah. that? Yeah. <laughs> you know, he's got to come because he's going to lead us and guide us into all truth. Now, in 1 Thessalonians 5, can you find that? Mm -hmm. First Thessalonians 5, okay. verse 19. I just licked my finger. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> Forgive me? <laughs> yeah. Okay, what verse was that? 19. 519. <laughs> this is the licky finger Skip scripture. Get your fingers out of your mouth, <laughs> Shannon. Okay, five, uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.19. Do not stifle the Holy Spirit. Well, I wonder how we can stifle the Holy Spirit. Well, one of the ways that I believe we can stifle him is reject him. Mm. Oh, yeah. He can't work if yeah. you reject him. We want to shut him down. Now, I, I believe we stifle him when we don't want to obey what he's asking us. And if... If he can be stifled, and if he can be hindered in, in that way, then he also has to have a way to communicate to us, okay? Mm. And Colossians chapter 1, 8. Colossians chapter 1, 8. He is the one who, talking about uh, one of the Epaphras, he's the one who told us about the great love for others that the Holy Spirit has given us. <laughs> yeah, the Holy Spirit had given. You, you see? So he gives us love for one another. So yeah. that's why the apostles back in Acts, I mean, as soon as the, as soon as the Holy Spirit was poured out, they started taking care of one another. Yep. They shared everything. Right. They, they ministered to one another. They, nobody was alone. Like they loved one another. So we have the Spirit coming upon people. Yes, that happened. But Jesus said that uh, when he was uh, talking to his disciples, he said that, that he, the Spirit of truth, would uh, be in them. Mm -hmm. Okay? And, w you know, when you talk about the, the love to others, that the Holy Spirit. You know, that's the reason why the Holy Spirit's been... It's really not about doing miracles so that, you know, uh, well, look at us, because it, that part of it's not for us. Oh, it's glory. for God's that's glory. That's for, for God's glory. Yeah. But every time when we do the work or when we're, where we obey the Holy Spirit, we're going to love somebody else. It's for somebody else. It's the for love. The, uh, the anointing is not so that we can look good. The anointing is so that we can give it out. Yes. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. 
Now, I, I want us to see in uh, Acts chapter 8. Okay. Um, I think it'd be good for us just to kind of read through a little bit. Um, let's see. There's the story of Simeon and uh, Simon. In verse 14, when the apostles, which are the special messengers at Jerusalem, heard that, that Samaria had accepted and welcomed the word of God, they sent Peter and John, John to them. And they came down and prayed for them that the Samaritans might receive the Holy Spirit. You see, the Holy Spirit is someone to be received. You see? The, um, for he had not yet fallen upon any of them, but they had only been baptized into the name of the Lord Jesus. So they were obviously believers. They were followers of Jesus. But they hadn't even heard that there was a, a, a person like the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. In here, verse 17, the apostles laid their hands on them one by one, and they received. It's like you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now, there was this guy, Simon, who saw that the Holy Spirit was imparted through the laying on of, on of uh, the apostles' hands. He brought some money, and he offered it to them. Grant me also this power and authority in order that anyone on whom I lay my hands may receive the Holy Spirit. He recognized there was an impartation here. This fellow wanted in. And Peter said to him, Destruction overtake your money and you, because you imagined that you could obtain the free gift of God without money. With money. Yes, with money. You could obtain the free gift of God with money. Mm -hmm. Look, it. you can do all kinds of good works. You can do all kinds of things, but you cannot buy yeah. the filling of and the baptism it's of the Holy gift. Spirit. It's a gift. It is a gift. If I hand you a gift, you didn't go buy it. No. I bought it. That's right. And I give it to you. That's right. It's free. That's you. right. You don't have to spend a cent for it. Woohoo! <laughs> You have neither part nor lot in this matter, for your heart is all wrong in God's sight. Mm -hmm. Now, how did, how did Peter come by this information? Somewhere along the line, mm. the Holy Spirit, who, was not, who had not only come upon um, Peter was also instructing Peter. How far down did we read? To the bottom of... Uh, uh, just 21. 21, oh, okay. Yeah. You have neither part nor lot in this matter, for your heart is all wrong in God's sight. God knows our hearts. Mm -hmm. The heart of man is deceitful in all kinds of different things. You know, this pandemic is not just about a virus, but there are, um, uh, well, there are forces at work that uh, want to spread fear. There are forces at work that, um, that desire to manipulate. And there are forces at work that desire to make money. You know, we don't battle, the Bible talks about this, we don't battle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, and God recognizes that there's something in his heart here. So he, re, mm -hmm. Peter says, so, re, re, repent of this depravity and wickedness of yours, and pray to the Lord that if possible, this contriving thought and purpose of your heart may be removed, 
and disregarded for and and forgiven you for i see that you were in the gall of bitterness and a bond forged by iniquity held captive by sin oh my so there's a scripture that says uh only god knows the heart so in this case peter must have got a message from god you're right it, it was a clear picture of Simon's heart. That's right. Condition of his heart. And That's that, right. that was given to Peter by the Holy Spirit. That's right. To discern what was really going on, what the root was. That's right. Yeah. He see that's part of his work, you know, to discern hearts mm. and, and those kind of things. He says, You're you're in the gall of bitterness, a bond forged by iniquity. You know. And uh when, when the apostles had borne their testimony and preached the message of the Lord, they went back to Jerusalem proclaiming the glad tidings to the many villages of, of the Samaritans on their way. They were ministering to Gentiles on the way, you see. But the angel of the Lord says to Philip, Rise, proceed southward at midday on the road that runs from Jerusalem down to Gaza. This is the desert road. So he got up and went. So... How did he get his instruction here? The angel of the Lord. The angel of the Lord. So he got up. It doesn't say he had a conversation. It just says he got up and went. And behold, an Ethiopian a eunuch of great authority under Cadmus, the queen of the Ethiopians, who was in charge of all her treasures and had come to Jerusalem to worship. He was now returning and sitting in the chariot he was reading the book of Isaiah. Then in uh, verse 29, we have a remarkable scripture. We want to know the work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit said to Philip, go and join yourself to this chariot. Now, the Holy Spirit must have spoken to Peter in dealing with Simon. That's the job of Gave the him Holy discernment. Spirit. Gave yeah. him discernment yeah. is a great word. And you know God is able to give you discernment in regarding matters that you are involved in in your life. You know, uh, the apostle says, don't, don't be ignorant. We're not ignorant of the devil's devices. Mm. You see. And the Holy Spirit revealed to Peter what was going on here is another uh, that the, gives ho him direction. the Holy Spirit gives him direction. Very specific instruction. Go forward and join yourself to this chariot. And walk along beside it. Yeah. And uh, accordingly, Philip running up to him. I think that's a key word because Philip was obedient. And, and sometimes we don't know how the Holy Spirit talks. But the Holy Spirit desires to talk. He desires to lead us. He desires to, to give us discernment. And he desires to give us direction. He'll give you discernment. And he'll give you direction. You need discernment in this day. But you will also need direction. Mm -hmm. And this shows us all he did was the Holy Spirit said to him. You know, and so you can ask, well, I, I wonder what that voice sounded like. <laughs> well, I don't know. I, I, I don't know what you were. When it's in, when it's in your inner person, it just kind of sounds like your voice. It, it does it, kind of sound sounds like, like a thought. Yeah. But it's really God's thought. <laughs> we, we call it a conscience sometimes. And I'm mm -hmm. going, well, it's not really a conscience. I, um, I have. It's very specific. You know, I, I have had very specific. Um, in, instruction that I've just gone up and and and, and done it and and I and I really I can't tell you that right at that moment I recognized it as being God. But when I took a step back, I I went. This is how I begin to learn His voice. Mm -hmm. See, the more He talks to you, the more you learn His voice. The more you listen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you the very first time. I was just getting to know Shannon. And uh, the very first time I called her up, she did not know who I was. Well, you pretended to be a pastor. <laughs>
pastor from some church and you needed a secretary. And I was like, who is this person? But the more that she got to know me, she really, <laughs> she, re she could pick out my voice. Oh, and I never knew what was coming next. No. <laughs> and how many times have I called somebody and I don't tell them who I am right away. But they recognize my voice. If, if they've talked to you enough, yeah. You see, as time progresses, we learn his voice. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. Mm -hmm. and they will listen to me. Uh, Peter had to have a listening ear to, to discern. Mm -hmm. Philip had to have a listening ear to hear mm -hmm. the spirit. And he didn't even hesitate. No, he went and ran. So... He needed, he had obedience as well. Oh, it's not just enough to hear. There was no hesitation. No, in fact, he ran. So, <laughs> he ran over to get there as quick as possible. And he heard the man reading from the prophet Isaiah, so he asked, do you understand what you're reading? And he said, how is it possible for me to do so unless someone explains it to me and guides me in the right way? He earnestly requested Philip to come up and sit beside him. Mm -hmm. Who would ever think? Mm -hmm. You know, so God gave Peter discernment. God, by the Holy Spirit, by the way, the Holy Spirit's also God. So Holy Spirit gave Philip instruction Philip did not hesitate. How many times do we have to do we hesitate with, oh well, I don't know. You know. Just me thinking. One of our <laughs> friends, one of our friends was sitting in his apartment and he he got this little voice and said, Go move your car. It was during the snow snowstorm mm -hmm. on Mother's Day weekend. Yes. And he went out and as soon as he, he moved his car and 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 had he left the car there, his uh, car would have been uh, damaged. His I don't, branch fell down yep. off the tree. And you begin to, after you go through something, you begin to realize that was God. It was a miracle, he said. Yes. And then I said, you were listening. You heard the prompting of God to do something, and, and you got right up and did it. And that was just amazing to him, too. You know, really? <laughs> yeah. As simple as that. I, I've had, when I, we were um, in the prison system um, with the, for, for programs and, and to give some guidance and help and, and counsel and, and uh, as a chaplain would, how many times I'd have somebody say, but you don't know what I've done. God would never be concerned about me. God was concerned about this guy, this one this Ethiopian eunuch. He was concerned about one. A, a, enough concern, enough concern that Philip went and was able to uh, help this man in the reading of this scripture. How is it possible for me to do so unless someone explains it to me and guides me in the right way and he earnestly requested him to come up and sit with him now this was the passage of scripture which he was reading like a sheep he was led to the slaughter and as a lamb before the shearer is dumb so he opened not his mouth in humiliation he was taken away by distressing and an oppressive judgment and justice was denied him who can describe or who can relate in in full the wickedness of his of this generation for his life is taken from the earth and and a bloody death inflicted upon him that was a scripture describing the kind of death jesus mm -hmm. would suffer yep. and you see what the holy spirit desires to do is to show forth the work of jesus to be there to teach through the teachings of Jesus. So it's interesting because P, uh, Philip began with the same scripture and then he used many others to tell him the good news about Jesus. And as they rode along, this is verse 36, they came to some water and the eunuch said, look, 
there's some water. Why can't I be baptized? <laughs> Obviously, Philip had told him about that, that you repent and you be baptized in water. Kept yep. it really simple, eh? Here's he the did. gospel of Jesus Christ. Yep. And, and when you repent and for the forgiveness of your sins and, and be baptized in, in water. And so as soon as he sees water, it's like, well, why can't I be baptized right now? <laughs> and, and, and so he orders the, the chariot to be stopped. Verse 38, yeah. orders the chariot to be stopped. And both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water and Philip baptized him. Yeah. And when they came out of the water, whoo, here it is again, oh, wow. the work of the Spirit. The Spirit of the Lord suddenly caught Philip away. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Like, okay, so Philip is putting the eunuch down under the water, and when the eunuch comes out of the water rejoicing, Philip suddenly gone. He's gone. It's like you'd be standing there like, what happened? You know, what? What was that? <laughs> and he goes on his way rejoicing. Yeah. And Philip was found in an, in another in another uh, a city preaching How does that happen? preaching the gospel. How does that happen? <laughs> wow. Now you see, we serve That's a, a miraculous remarkable. Sign. <laughs> we have a re remarkable God, a remarkable God. And if God wants you to get you somewhere, like He did this Ethiopian eunuch, you may have to run on your own steam, or He'll get you. You can get carried away yeah. in the spirit. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh my. my See, goodness. the fact is, God loves you. He gave Jesus for you. And he didn't want us to do this journey alone. He wanted to give his Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us, to help us, instruct us, empower us. Mm. And do marvelous things. Works wonderful through us. works, wonderful works. Through us. They, these are these are just two two fellows that that uh, are being used by the Holy Spirit. When our son was in a discipleship program many years ago, his instructors always reminded them because they were challenged many times to go out and minister to people just cold, you know, walk into the mall and ask the Holy Spirit to direct you to a person that you could pray with or something. And, um, and some of them were, you know, kind of hesitant to do that. But um, they always said, you never know what lies on the other side of your yeah. obedience to the yeah. Holy Spirit, to the leading of God. And as, ri as ridiculous it, as it might sound or seem to us, and that's why um, we talked about a scripture that the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of mm. God. They're foolishness to him. Yeah. And neither can he know them because they're spiritually discerned. And so Holy Spirit, if he's the one directing us and we're listening to him and willing to be obedient when he prompts us to do something, no matter how ridiculous uh, it, it sounds, th God always has a plan. God could see that eunuch. Mm -hmm. riding in the chariot. God had a plan to reach him. Chose Philip, who was who just was there. You know, had it all set up for him. Years ago... Um, and then takes him out to go another to another place. Yeah, yeah, right away. <laughs> he had another plan for somebody yeah, else. Right. But years ago, there was a story we heard of a woman. Uh, the Holy Spirit, God spoke to her and said, I want you to go uh, and... Sit, take your Bible and go and sit in the Tim Hortons every day uh, in the, every location in a 50 mile radius or something of where she lived and uh, so she said okay I, I can do that uh, she wasn't quite sure what that was going to look like or whatever but anyway she, she so she would just go and sit in the Tim Hortons with her Bible and and just watch people and you know, look at them. And, and then the next day, she moved on to the next Tim Hortons, and the next, and the next, and the next. And she never talked. Nobody approached her. Nobody, she, she didn't feel to talk to anybody. She just sat there every day. And so after a month, after she'd done the whole circuit of every Tim Hortons, um, she said, well, what now, Lord? And he said, oh, just do it again. <laughs> like, <laughs> nothing's happening. Yeah. You know, and so she shows up 
again at the first where Tim Hortons, there, where she started. This is not a story we, we read about. This is one no, that, this that was we a heard from the this person. Is, yeah, she was telling us the story. Anyway, so she sat in the Tim Hortons that, where she began her journey again, and suddenly a woman came up to her and said, Oh, my, you're back. Hmm. And the woman said, Yes, can I help you? And she said, I've been watching for you ever since that day you sat here. She said, you smiled and at me. What What is it that you have? Uh, there's something you have that I need. That woman had been waiting for, the, for, for her to return from her circuit, you know, within the 50 mile radius, her circuit of the Tim Hortons. So God had that plan in place. Yes, he did. For that one woman, you know, to hear about the love of God. She was searching for it. And and as ridiculous as it sounded, this woman was obedient, obedient to do it. Because God had a greater plan, that one soul. And he's concerned about that. The one. That one. The one. He'll leave ninety and nine. To go after awesome the one, <laughs> you know, yeah. and and you know, Jesus said, "My words are life." He said, "But they are also spirit." Yeah. You know, humans can produce human life, but the spirit produces spiritual, spiritual life, life. Yeah. and we really do not have life, spiritual life until we've been, what we use the term, born again, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. until the Holy Spirit connects with our spirit, mm -hmm. bears witness with our spirit that we are sons of God. Mm -hmm. For as many as received him, he gave, he gave them power to become sons and daughters, daughters of God. Of God. Yeah. I am so glad that we've had this time together tonight that maybe you are lacking that spiritual understanding. Maybe you are lacking the, the insight as to what may be going on. And, and, but God, he loves you regardless of stuff that you've done. He loves you. The Bible says that even while we were in our sin, even when we were against God, proof in point, Paul the apostle was, was persecuting believers. And yet, God stopped Paul the Apostle on the road to Damascus mm -hmm. and sought out Paul the Apostle. And, and his name was Saul back then. And he changed his name to Paul. And he became one that wrote a, a, a lot of the New Testament. We have insight from, from, this, from this man. Even though he had done wrong, even while he was in his sin, God loved him enough. Had his, had his, uh, he had his name and number, <laughs> you know, and drew Paul to himself, and he became a mighty one in Jesus Christ. Yeah. You have one. Uh, Do you want to? Uh, maybe you could pray for for anyone who doesn't know the Lord right now, and then we'll we'll go on and have our meeting. Heavenly Father, thank you. You said that it's not your will that any should perish, but all come to have everlasting life. And I'm Thank asking you, Father, you that you would open eyes and open ears. You do. And that you soften their hearts. Draw them by your Holy Spirit. Arrest Thank them. You. Some of you may have to arrest them like you did with Paul the Apostle. And mm -hmm. others, you'll just gently come to them and call them to yourself. Thank you, Lord. I ask, Lord, that you would open not, their, not just their eyes and ears, but you'll soften their hearts so they'll be able to respond mm -hmm. to you, to that calling, to what they see, to what they hear. They will respond to you and receive Jesus as personal Lord and Savior. And that uh, Holy Spirit, you also want to impact their life. So I'm asking you now by your Holy Spirit to draw them to that place of repentance. And that you would um, be in their life until Christ be formed in them. In Jesus' name. And to those of you who, who know the Lord and yet you struggle with, with hearing,
from him and the Holy Spirit and discerning whether that's your voice or his voice. I, I just want to encourage you uh, to wait before the Lord and say, Father, teach me. Teach me to hear. Holy Spirit, teach me. Holy Spirit was sent to teach us, lead us, and, uh, and you can begin to practice to hear his voice. Um, and uh, Jesus said, uh, Isaiah said in Isaiah 42 and 9, Behold, the former things have come to pass, and new things I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Hmm. Let's hear it, loved ones. And I'm reading a quote from Jack Hayford's book on the beauty of spiritual language. The same spirit of prophecy waiting to anoint our witness to the testimony of Jesus in all his uniqueness is the one who adds yet this reminder. Your history is no guarantee of your future. So let us come again. Okay, so sometimes we look back to our experience mm -hmm. and it's like, I blew it. I, I knew afterwards that I really blew it. You know, God prompted me to do something or to go and speak to someone and I refused. And many times we'll get really down on ourselves because mm -hmm. we have done that and, and we don't forgive ourselves. And we don't say, oh, I'm sorry. We don't repent and then say, okay, Lord, give me another chance. So, so we live in that past, you know, in our failure. But your history is no guarantee of your future. So let us come again humbly to Jesus himself. Let us request of him a fresh anointing, a filling by the Holy Spirit. And as we do, he will answer. And our love for Christ and for one another yes. will abound. We talked yes. about that. The Holy Spirit yeah. will come and do that work in us. I can't make that happen, but the Holy Spirit can. And the world shall know, and the lost shall be reached, Amen. and they shall be saved. Because you and I are listening for the direction yeah. of the Holy Spirit. We are listening Amen. to uh, his instruction. And God's purpose in filling us shall be fulfilled again and again. This Pentecost is not just a one time, I got tongues, I'm good. <laughs> the Bible says we're to be being filled. Yep. And every day we need it. More than a one time experience. Every day. And, and that scripture that we that uh, Peter spoke to them. What did he say? Uh, something about this generation? Oh my goodness, where was that? I, I don't know where you read it. But anyway, we need it in this generation. Yes, we do. More and more and more. Yes, we do. The ability to hear what Holy Spirit is, is saying, what Father is saying. So somebody might say, well, how do I do that? And uh, for myself, I just simply started saying, asking, Father, what do you want to say? Holy Spirit, you know, that I could hear mm -hmm. you, what Father wants to say, what he wants That's to good. do. Show me, tell me, I'm listening. I'm listening. And, and then we need to obey. That's the second part of it, like mm -hmm. Philip did, to obey. Uh, go running. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Run to obey. Yeah. Yeah. Don't hesitate. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. I'll tell you one, one, key, one key thing about that is when you run, when you hear the word of God and you run and do it, you're not thinking. Yeah. Your mind doesn't You don't talk yourself out of nope. it. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. what happens a lot of oh, time. Yeah. Yeah, we, we hesitate. We're, we're questioning. We're wondering how this thing, what the, what the outcome is it going to be? Am I going to look bad? Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. run, oh, run, we're, run. We're more concerned about ourselves. Yeah. Listen, if, if Philip had it's like well lord i don't even know that eunuch and that's gonna look really weird me run along beside the chariot you know like that's really gonna look weird yeah. you know that man never would have come to faith in christ no. so what lies on the other side of your obedience to him because his uh his plan and purpose is for people to be saved that come to christ that's right so i just encourage you in that word tonight and uh don't live by your mistakes from the past just start going forward and say, Holy Spirit, I'm listening. Father, I'm listening. Would you give me direction? Would you speak to me so that I can share your love with someone else and, and your purpose will be fulfilled in their lives? Oh, Lord, 
pour it on. Yes. I'm ready. Yes, yeah. I'm ready. Yeah. I'm ready. Oh, Lord, yes. pour it on. Yeah. I'm ready. Praise the Lord. Do you have a song for that? I oh, don't think so. I, I should write one. <laughs> you should. Well, we, will you just bless oh, you this do evening? A, do you have a song? Yeah, you give me some. I, I'm just going to, uh, yeah. Um, just a reminder that uh, gospel music uh, will be live streamed on Friday evening. Pastor Ron will be doing that at 6.30 p.m. And Sunday morning, uh, the message, worshiping the unknown God. So you want to tune in for that. And we just pray and bless you. And if you at any time need prayer, you can uh, email us at info at bethelwoodstock.ca. Uh, there were no prayer requests shared this evening, but, it, but if you want to do that, you can send a, a private message to us, and uh, we'd be happy to pray for you. We just want to remember, uh, especially Zone 5, the Campbellton area, the folks that are sick with the virus and in hospital, and all the others connected with that. and. We just lift them up to you, Lord, that your healing power would come upon them. Those of our church family that are in hospital or suffering, uh, we pray your healing power upon them as well, Lord. Those that are discouraged and defeated, we pray the power of the Holy Spirit on you tonight. And we pray the Lord would bless you and keep you and give you his peace. No As I raise 